Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're going to be doing a painting based on Super Mario RPG. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. Now I played Super Mario RPG for the first time when I was in college. Um, I was dating Steven at the time and he really wanted me to play through it with him, but being in a long distance relationship we both decided to play it at the same time, but we would talk over Skype with our video chat up so he could help me like find the secrets and kind of some strategies to beat some of the bosses. And as we played, he would tell me about kind of his memories of playing the game, like, oh, when I got to this area, this is what I remember as a kid. Um, so it was really special to kind of play through it with him and hear his history with the game as I was playing through it for my first time. So I thought it was a good time to paint the forest maze. So I've sketched it out here and I'm trying to kind of keep the following things in mind and just kind of going from these like five bullet points. Um, basically that the stump is a pipe, the trees are tropical, everything is very saturated, and it's going to have kind of this fading out to dark as it goes towards the edges of the canvas, and also it's isometric. Those are kind of the only things I'm keeping in mind. Now I did base this sketch heavily on the game, but I'm not really going to be thinking too much about that as I'm painting. I want to have this clearing in the middle and the stump in the middle, and then it's going to kind of just go from there, trying to just keep those five things in mind as I'm working. So the first thing I want to do is kind of find the middle of my canvas so I know about where that's going to be. I'm going to drop kind of the clearing and the stump down just a little bit, just so I have a little bit more space for some trees. And then I'm going to kind of roughly sketch in the tree stump. From there, I'm going to start with the clearing itself, like the brown, dirt, sandy colors. And then I can start to kind of build in some of these greens of all of the underbrush. The placement of everything on the canvas isn't super important. There's only a couple things that are, namely the clearing and then the stump. So I started by figuring out my middle of my canvas, which is um, 12 across and 9 up because it's 18 by 24, and I knew I wanted it to be just a little below center. So I roughly sketched in where the stump is going to go. I put a cube around it to make it isometric to kind of figure out how much space it's going to take up in the end. And then I figured out the clearing from there because I had the bottom of that stump and that would be kind of the actual ellipse of where this sits. Now it's not going to be a perfect circle in the end because all the undergrowth is going to cover parts of it, but I want to kind of have this here so I know about how big it's going to be. And then I could kind of draw in the path off to this way. Now that I have that in, I can start to add the colors of the dirt. So on my palette I have a variety of browns. I have Titan Buff, Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, uh, Burnt Sienna, uh, this is Burnt Umber, and then I have Van Dyke Brown and then Mars Black. Now, just like when I do the um, Starry Night paintings where I have the sky and the galaxies, I'm going to be using a sponge to kind of bring in these browns. It's going to be darker towards the edges of the ellipse and then towards the bottom of this canvas, and it's going to be lighter towards the center, kind of where the sun is going to be hitting here. So I'm just going to be using a sponge and kind of tapping in, starting with the lighter colors and then fading it dark towards the edges. Now whenever I do this, I do wear gloves because I don't want this paint to get like underneath my fingernails and onto my skin. And I also have a natural sea sponge. And I've soaked it in water to make sure it's damp and then I've squeezed out all the liquid from it. I don't want that water to get into my paint and make it watered down. But now that it's mostly dry but still kind of flexible from the water, it's perfect to paint with. And I'm just starting with that Titan Buff, that lightest color. And I'm going to take that on the sponge just a little bit and kind of start to tap that in here on the canvas, working it into all the bright colors and then I'll work into some of that yellow ochre. I'm trying to keep these nice and bright and saturated as I work into the shadow sections. I 
like the effect the sponge gave to the dirt. You can almost see like individual grains of all of the different colors on the dirt area. Now this darker area is the shadow of the stump on the ground. Once I draw it in, it'll look a little bit better, um, but I kind of want to do the stump first before I do any of the background just because nothing's going to cover it or be in the way if I put it here. And I think it would be neat if I kind of started from the center of this painting and it grew outwards as I worked on it. I think it would be a really cool effect for the time-lapse video. So I'm going to draw that in first. I'm using this line to kind of figure out where my center point was and this mark over here to figure out where the middle of the clearing is. That way I'll know exactly where the stump needs to sit and it can sit right here with this shadow. Now that I'm happy with the stump, I'm starting to fill it in with color. Now I am using all of the same browns I used for the dirt, and the dirt ended up a little bit more yellow than I wanted it to be, which is the color of the stump. So once I start to fill this in, I'm going to try and push it a little bit different than that yellow. And if it doesn't work and it's still too close to the color of the dirt, I'm going to make a glaze out of like a reddish brown color and go over the top of all of the dirt just to make sure that the contrast between the two is different enough that you can see the stump versus the ground. The tree stump is looking really good. Um, I think I messed up this wood grain line right here. It's not as sharp as some of the other ones, but otherwise I liked it. I used some of the other browns to bring that in, and I'm still not sure how I feel about the dirt if it needs to be more of a warmer brown instead of a yellow brown. So I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. I can always add a wash over the top later. After I fix this line here, the next thing I wanna do is start to bring in some of the greens. I used some chalk and drew in where my trees are going. Now, they're not probably gonna be exactly where that is, but I wanted some idea of where they might be later. Now, for this undergrowth, I'm going to be starting with my darkest color. And just like the dirt, I'm going to tap it in with the same sponge. Now, with the darkest color, I can bring it the furthest from the clearing because it's going to get darker the closer to the edge of the canvas it gets, and lighter the closer to the clearing it gets. So the darkest color can go the furthest away from the clearing. And then I'll move to my medium color, which may only go this far, and then my lightest color, which may be just right here on the edge. I'm going to kind of just haphazardly place this around just to give an indication of this. I'm going to go back later and define some of these leaves so they stand out more, but I just want there to be a hint of color so I can start to see where all of this is going to go. After I finished tapping in kind of the base of the underbrush here, I started to use those same greens to fill in this leaf. I started with the dark one and then the medium and then brought the lightest one right on top here. 
I still think it's a little bit too dark because it's right in the bright sunlight, so I'm just going to leave it alone for now and work on these tree trunks. I've drawn in five of them, um, and I'm going to start by adding some value. Um, I'm using the same colors that I used down here, but I'm going to use the darker ones kind of on the outside. So like on this tree, the darker colors are going to go on the left, but on this tree, the darker colors are going to go on the right. And then I'll kind of work towards the opposite side, bringing in some of these lighter highlight colors. I don't want these trees to be too bright, so I'm not going to get as bright as the yellow I have here because they're still kind of in the shadow in the underbrush of the canopy. So I'm just gonna kind of use the darkest colors to bring that texture and that detail. I did the tree trunks and I was working on the apple coconut things and I thought about if the light is kind of here, it's going to hit and kind of reflect up and bounce. So it would make kind of this side of this tree and then this side of this tree a little bit lighter. The same for these apple coconut things. I tried to think about how if it bounced up this way, it would hit like these ones first and these ones would be a little bit more in the shadow. So I did that and then I think I need to kind of make them a bit more round by making them have more value because right now they're kind of all the same value on the canvas. And also I need to darken the ones that are a bit further back in space. So I'm just taking some shading gray with a soft brush and I'm filling in a little bit on like the back sides just to kind of make them darker towards the part that isn't getting as much light. The way I'm doing these trees is I drew in a circle of chalk just to kind of contain all of the palm fronds. I don't want them to go crazy. I don't want them to be too big, too small. So I drew that in to give myself a good idea of kind of where they're going to sit. And then I can start from the center of that, um, a little bit lower than center, and just bring these lines out. And these are the centers of all of these palm fronds. And once I draw one out, then I can start from the center and just kind of bring the sides of each little bit of this palm frond out and kind of an arrow shape. So they kind of both point out and down. Now the ones on the side are a little trickier because you don't always see all of them. So maybe I'll bring this one out here. And because it kind of arcs so much, maybe on this side, you'll see all of it. But on the top part of the seam, you'll only see some, maybe to about here, because the other ones would be kind of back into the tree where you wouldn't see the rest of them. Now, I find the top parts of palm trees the trickiest. The fronds that sit across the top here, because they're going back or kind of forward, they're the ones that are hardest to draw or paint. So I suggest looking at different palm trees and kind of seeing how they look. But sometimes I just find that if I bring like a little hip to it here, that that kind of works enough for how it should look. The best way for these palm trees that I found is to kind of draw in a circle up here. That'll give me an idea of how big I want these palm fronds to go. And you can kind of see that over here. I've done that first darkest layer, just like I did my darkest layer down here. And I had drawn in this circle where I kind of wanted to contain everything. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of a bigger space up top here that I didn't fill in. And that's because all of these palm trees kind of have two layers. They have kind of this first hat of palm fronds and then they kind of have a smaller little one sitting on top. And that's what I'm doing over here. I did all the first layer, even with all of my highlights. 
And then I started to bring in the second, smaller one over here. It's just done in black so far, so once that's dry, I can start to bring in the highlights on that too. But in the meantime, I'm doing the first layer for all of the rest of the trees. In painting, sometimes you have to redo things. You've done them a certain way and you don't like how they turned out. Now there's parts of this I do like. I like the trunk, I liked how the berry coconut apples turned out, but I'm not super fond of the palm tops. They work good for other types of palm trees, but I just don't like how they look with this painting. So I'm gonna take some black gesso and go back over the tops. It's okay if I have to redo the fruit. It's okay if I have to redo parts of the trunk. I'm gonna try and avoid those the best I can. But I'm gonna go ahead and cover up all the tops of these green things. And then once it's dry, I can try again. In my sketchbook, I added some black gesso and then drew in the tops of these trees. Now I'm gonna do two different types. I'm gonna do some for the darker trees that are sitting a bit further back, and then I'm gonna do another one for the lighter trees where you're gonna see more color. It's kind of like how you see more bright greens here and then dark greens over here, but I'm just gonna be doing it with these tree tops. And I'm going to use all of these same greens here, but the darker tree is gonna have more of the dark colors and the lighter trees are gonna have more of these light colors. I redid the fruit and I made them a little bit bigger than last time, which I think was necessary based on the size of the tree. Now for the trees that are a bit further away, like these ones here, I made sure that I only used some of the darker colors, raw sienna mixed with the burnt umber just to kind of tone that yellow and that red down, just to make sure that they didn't stand out as much as the trees that are a bit closer and a bit brighter fruit. Once I was done with that, um, on these trees here, I added some more like cadmium yellow, cadmium red to brighten up the red and the yellow of that fruit. Once all of that was done, I took some shading gray to kind of make sure that it was darker on the side that needed to be darker. Because the light's hitting here and kind of bouncing back, the left side of this fruit's going to be darker, so I added more shading gray to the back left side. On the right, it's the opposite because it's gonna bounce here and then up this way, so this side's going to be darker. Once I was happy with all of that shading gray and making sure that they were shaded appropriately, the further back trees, I added more shading gray just to darken them completely, just so there's barely a hint of them on that tree. 
But now that all of the fruit is done, I can start to work on the treetops. So in my sketchbook, I worked on trying out two different ways that I could do these treetops. That's different than how I had done it the first time. Now this one right here is going to be the trees that are further away where you can barely see what's going on. I'm just gonna use the very darkest colors that I used for the undergrowth and give a hint of the shape of the top of the tree. Now on this side over here, this is for those trees that stand closer to the center of this clearing. I'm gonna use the brighter colors that's in my undergrowth to kind of just give a little bit of a highlight on the side of the tree that faces the clearing. That way it's doing that same kind of bouncing reflected light where it's going to have that brightness closer to the clearing. I drew in the first set of leaves for all of the trees that are closest. Now these ones you're gonna be able to see a lot better than the ones in the background because they're going to be brighter. And they're sitting there kind of like mushroom caps on top of these trees. On the back, they're kind of going back into space and on the front, they're coming forward, but all of them are kind of pointing down to the ground. So they're sitting here like these mushroom caps. And I wanted these to be bigger than the ones here that are harder to see um, just because they're closer and they're gonna see them anyway. And I didn't want to worry too much about covering up some of the berries. I wanted to make sure you could see them, but I didn't want to like cover them completely. So I kind of thought about that a little bit as I drew them in based on where I had put the berries. Um, I'm not worried about the trees in the background getting covered. Those are meant to be just kind of like these ghostly trees in the back that you barely see. So I'm going to take those darkest greens like the ones that are already here and block in all of these leaf shapes. Then I can erase the chalk to get a good idea of how it looks. And then I can take my lighter greens, um, like the ones in here, to kind of bring in the highlights to make them a lot lighter than these trees in the background. And I can also take that shading gray to kind of darken the ones in the background so it kind of fades naturally into this black here. That way it's going to look like these parts are illuminated just like the fronts of these trees, and these parts will be in shadow just like the backs of the tree trunks. finished doing all of the trees and I think they're too bright, especially on the back part right here. So I'm going to take some shading gray and just go over the back parts just to make them a little bit darker. I 
everything else is done and I really felt like this back part was incomplete because I had done so much of this detail here. So I just wanted to bring a little bit of that back here, just like a hint of some more detail than just the sponge tapping in. So I took my chalk and started to draw in a couple leaves and I'm using those same greens to fill them in. And the leaves are mostly done, I might just darken them a little bit with shading gray. But I'm taking some of those same greens I had used in the foreground and just tapping in some longer grasses and some more leaves. And we're done! We have the Forest Maze from Super Mario RPG. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting.